Break out the parachute pants because this is one servant that you just can't touch. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, bringing you a spotlight for the servant leading the unofficial Strike Witches collab, Galatea. We'll be examining her stats and skills as well as going over pointers on how to utilize her effectively and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you got that emotionless tag favorited, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so you can catch all of these videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. And now, onto Galatea's stats. Galatea has a max HP of 14,040 and a max attack of 11,414, which becomes 12,555 due to her Berserker class modifier. As a Berserker, Galatea has abnormally high HP, but her attack is near the bottom of her class. Compared to the other SSRs, however, her attack is decent, while her HP is above average. When it comes to hit counts, Galatea has 5 hits on her Quick Card, 3 hits on her Arts, 3 hits on her Buster, and 5 hits on her Extra Card. Card. Her heavy buster deck means both her star generating and NP gain are below average, at least on her face cards. Galatea does have an unusual stat spread for a Berserker, with more focus on defense rather than attack, which makes her feel more like an all-rounder or semi-support, at least in terms of pure stat distribution. Taking a look at her skills, her first skill is Pygmalion's Affection Rank EX. This skill increases her Arts and Buster card effectiveness for 3 turns, between 20 and 30%. It also increases her buff removal resistance for 1 time, last for 3 turns, between 50 and 100%, all of these effects depending on level, and it charges her NP gauge by 20%. Her second skill is Maiden of Sculpture, rank A. This skill grants her a stackable gut, lasting for 3 turns, and reviving her of between 1000 and 3000 HP. It also increases her defense for 2 hits, or 3 turns, between 50 and 100%, both effects depending on level. And finally, Galatea's last skill is Aphrodite's Grace, rank EX. This grants her a regeneration buff for 3 turns, which cleanses the party's debuffs every turn and recovers the party's HP between 1000 and 2000 every turn, depending on level. This skill can also be upgraded through an interlude, which grants it the additional effect of charging Galatea's NP gauge every time she uses a buster card between 5 and 10%, depending on level. As for her passives, Galatea has Madness Enhancement rank EX, which increases her buster card effectiveness by 12%, and Magic Resistance rank B, which increases her debuff resist by 17.5%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Galatea has a Buster deck with Quick Arts, Buster, 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 and an Arts Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Pygmalion Chisel Out, which is a single target Arts attack that deals damage to one enemy, with a damage modifier between 900 and 1500%, depending on level. It also reduces their NP gauge by 1, and it increases Galatea's NP damage for 3 turns, between 20 and 40%, depending on overcharge. Galatea does require an interesting assortment of mats for Ascension. For level Ascension, she's going to need 22 Spinal Fluid, 10 Aurora Steel, 15 Giant Rings, and 8 Fruit of Longevity. Spinal Fluid can be farmed at Shinjuku Station in Shinjuku with a 74% drop rate, Aurora Steel have a 47% drop rate at the Castle of Ice and Snow in Lost Belt 2, Giant Rings are best farmed at the Giant's Flower Garden in Lost Belt 2 where they have a 44% drop rate, and Fruit of Longevity have a 22% drop rate at the West Interstellar City in Olympus. For skill leveling, she's going to need 15 Aurora Steel, 44 Spinal Fluid, 15 Fruit of Longevity and 23 crowns per skill. The crowns of Radiant Silver can be found at the Thanatos Island in Atlantis where they have a 41% drop rate. At long last, Mecha Musume meets fate. On a personal note, I absolutely love when celebrity guest artists get to design servants. Many of them do an amazing job creating unique and original designs just for fate, whether that be Wu and Benny Enma from the Disgaea artists or more recently Kuku Khan from the Black Lagoon creator. And Galatea is no exception to that tradition. Both Galatea's artwork and kit are exceptionally well designed and make her feel truly unique among Berserkers. And that's because despite a very defensive stat spread, Galatea is deceptively powerful. The key to her strength lies in her triple buster deck, which synergizes perfectly with her Madness Enhancement EX. So unlike other art or quick Berserkers, Galatea's face cards can push out high amounts of damage and she can even make buster brave chains. So don't let her low attack stat fool you. Another area where Galatea is deceptive strong is in her NP gain. Because again, despite her low initial stats on her buster deck, Galatea's skills and Noble Phantasm more than make up for what she lacks. Her first skill, Pagmillion's Affection, is a 30% Arts and Buster steroid that also charges her NP gauge by 20% and makes her immune to buff removal. The 30% 3 turn card buff is pretty standard for DPS servants, but what really makes this strong on Galatea in particular is that it not only buffs her NP damage, but a large chunk of her face card 
cards as well, since all but one of her cards is either Arts or Buster. So she is able to get very good mileage out of this one buff. Not to mention that it also happens to buff NP gain and charges her NP, so it even helps her with more looping, which yes, Galatea can do surprisingly well. The buff removal resistance is niche, but it does come in handy for many late game fights by ensuring that Galatea can't be slowed down or softened up by having any of her buffs removed, including defensive ones. Speaking of which, her second skill, Maiden of Sculpture, gives Galatea a set of powerful defensive buffs. Firstly, it grants her a stackable Guts. This means that she can potentially have multiple Guts effects active at the same time if you pair her with another Servant who can grant her Guts or if you give her a Guts CE. Naturally, having multiple revives makes Galatea incredibly tanky and resistant to one-shot kills, unlike most Berserkers. But that isn't all. She also has a straight-up 100% defensive buff, which all but nullifies damage for the next two hits. And remember, these buffs are unremovable when paired with her first skill, so she's even capable of tanking noble phantasms from servants like Amakusa. This skill alone gives Galatea immense survivability on par with Zerkers like Vlad and Ku Alter. Finally, Galatea also has another great piece of utility in Aphrodite's Grace. This skill heals the party for 2000 HP and removes their debuffs every turn for three turns. And yes, you heard that right, it removes debuffs every return for the whole party. Late game bosses love to stack debuffs on the party, so a single cleanse can be invaluable, let alone three. In many challenge quests, this will straight up deny an enemy from doing anything to your party and can single-handedly win you fights. After an upgrade, Aphrodite's Grace also gains the effect of granting Galatea's Buster card the ability to charge up to 10% NP, which just further adds to her consistency as an NP spammer. All of Galatea's skills are strong, but you should prioritize leveling her card buff first for that extra bit of damage, followed by Aphrodite's Grace for mostly the NP charge, and then Guts last, although you can level Guts second prior to her interlude. Mana loading and extra attack up are both worth taking since they can really help Galatea with NP looping and single target damage respectively. Galatea's NP is a single target arts attack that drains enemy NP charge and increases her own NP damage. Galatea's NP is actually quite strong. The guaranteed NP damage buff stacks nicely with her arts buff to effectively give her a mana burst level attack buff, but really the damage is secondary to this NP's utility. The NP drain is just bonkers strong in art stall teams. Which if you haven't noticed by now, is kinda what Galatea is made for. Her Noble Phantasm also has very high refund after each use due to those high hit counts, so she can effectively spam or even loop her NP in most art teams. In other words, she can continuously drain enemies of their NP charge and stall them out for multiple turns at a time. A lot like Archer Artoria. And just like Squirtoria, Galatea is a strong arts DPS with tremendous utility for challenge quests. In stall teams in particular, she has the ability to completely nullify an enemy's ability to inflict debuffs on your team while also inflicting high amounts of damage on them, and also tanking almost anything that they can throw at her. For that reason, she also makes for an extremely strong soloer and grail front fighter, especially after she gets that buff to Aphrodite's Grace and can make Buster Brave Chains while also charging her NP gauge by 30%. The flexibility of being able to be used solo or in teams also makes her incredibly flexible in team comps, where she can be the main DP that you build your team around, or even just a sweeper like Herc. All of this utility does come at a high cost though cooldowns. Galatea does have longer than average skill cooldowns, especially on Aphrodite's Grace, which can make it harder to use her without a cooldown reduction support, if only arts teams had access to one of those. To a lesser degree, Galatea also suffers from her deck construction. Being a triple buster deck is great for damage, but it makes arts chains harder to set up in arts teams which is kind of important. But probably Galatea's biggest weakness is her lack of an NP interlude. Her NP does do decently good damage, but it pales in comparison to the upper echelon of Zerkers like Kentoki, MHX Alter, and most especially Vlad, who fills the same exact niche as her and is likely already in a lot of people's caldeas. For the most part, these are small complaints though, and most of them can be overcome with solid team building. As I mentioned, Galatea wants to be used in an art stall team, so pair her with allies who can buff her while simultaneously debuffing or stalling enemies. Servants like Tamamo, Mosh, Waver, and Paracelsus for example. Tamamo and Waver are both excellent for stall teams since not only do they get to drain and paralyze enemies, but both can help Galatea charge her and 
MP, and Tamamo can even cut down on some of her cooldowns. Mosh and Paracelsus are also strong free-to-play options, Mosh for her great defensive utility, and Para since he can give Galatea double guts and boost her NP gain. Galatea's bond CE is Memory of Cyprus, it's a one-time guts that revives her with 20% HP, and charges all allies NP gauge by 20% whenever her guts is consumed. Unfortunately, that NP charge only occurs once, so it isn't abusable. But this is a strong CE for some challenge quests and boss fights where you need a lot of survivability. But for the most part, you're better off focusing on Galatea's damage by giving her CEs that buff arts and NP damage, like Black Grail, Sign of a Smiling Face, Afternoon in the Citadel, or Welcome to Oniland. The burn from Black Grail isn't too bad because of Galatea's heal, and the mixed arts and buster buffing cards can help elevate both her face card and NP damage. Speaking of which, Flower Sunshine is a strong CE for her in the future, as it buffs both her Arts and Buster cards, and also gives her additional overcharge for a stronger NP. As for Command Codes, I really like Mages of Flowers on her, just because it works so well with Aphrodite's Grace for giving her even more free NP charge when soloing. Overall, Galatea is a top tier Arts DPS for challenge quests. She excels in difficult content where she can benefit from her incredible tankiness and utility, like debuff removal and NP drain. And even when it comes to damage dealing, she can put out solid numbers and melt most bosses HP bars with her spammable NP and strong buster deck. She is in an unenviable position being in direct competition with Vlad, a very common SSR who also have been styled damage her, and she can suffer from some cooldown issues without the proper supports, but all in all, Galatea earns an A from me. She is an incredibly useful servant that only gets stronger as the game gets more difficult, and she still works very well for snowballing early game stuff for those newer players out there looking for a servant to carry them through story. Honestly, if the Berserker class wasn't just filled with OP damage dealers, she'd be the best single target Zerker in my opinion, so here's hoping that she gets an NP interlude sometime soon to close the gap. And those are my thoughts on Galatea, she's a strong servant that often goes overlooked, and if this video wasn't enough to convince you to roll for her, then maybe this will do the trick. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, and consider subscribing subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over in our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, all linked in the description down below, and I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight, so burn me out, later.